instilling the silence, which is the fragrance of Dharma Sutra. What is the significance of all these messages, be it of Buddha or Jesus or Lao Tse? These messages must connect you to your inner silence. Deep within, under each turmoil, there is utter silence. You are lost in the waves, in the disturbance on the surface, and you have forgotten the silence that lies deep within the ocean of the being. When I speak on any particular aspect, it is to connect you through the choice of the words, through the message, through the energy field, through my awareness. That connection with the silence that you have forgotten. My effort through these talks on Diamond Sutra is to instill in you the same silence, the same ambience that prevailed when these sutras happened for the first time between, between Buddha and Subhuti in Avant Pindika Park, Shavas. This is the beginning of a new series of talks on Diamond Sutra of Buddha. Buddhist scriptures are elaborate and a fine details have been given. These sutras were narrated by Anand, who was the principal disciple and who lived almost like a shadow of Buddha. He never separated from him even for a moment. He slept in the room where Buddha slept. He had watched every aspect of Buddha's life, his gestures, and he was very minute in observing the gestures of Buddha during all the times. As the inner sky changes, the gestures on the outer begins to change and manifest different colors and textures. It happened once Buddha sojourned in Avant Pindika Park by Shravasti. This is the venue where Buddha lived and spent most of the time in giving his sermons. Avant Anant Pindika Park near this, near Shravasti, the city where Buddha lived. It was a great company of the monks, even 1250 monks. One day at the time for breaking fast, the world honored one and robed himself and carrying his bowl made his way into the great city of Shravasti to beg for the food. Buddhist monks, they will go in the morning and beg whatever they get. They are supposed to stand up in front of the one house not even call, and if after staying there for a few moments, no one comes out, he moves to another, and thus he was allowed to visit only five houses. And if nothing is given, he comes, returns empty-handed, and that day is the day of fast, because nothing has been collected. So Buddha enrobed himself, and whatsoever is being given, he takes in his begging bowl one pot. Just as sometimes in our dishes, we have one pot dish. Everything is cooked in one pot and one serving bowl. It is served. We eat that. It's a complete meal. So in case of the Buddhist monk, whether it is a complete meal or not doesn't matter. And they will eat only once. Whatsoever they have collected on that particular day, they will eat, and that's the end of the day. It is a great benediction when you eat slightly less or skip 
on a regular basis or occasionally one meal or one and a half meal. So one day at the time for breaking fast, the word honored and robed himself, carrying his begging bowl, made his way into the great city of Shravasti to beg for foods. In the midst of the city, he begged from door to door according to the rule. This done, he returned to his retreat and took his meals. When he finished, he put down, put away the robe and the begging bowl, washed his feet, arranged his seat and sat down. Such minute description. Buddha said, Anand said, you may miss even a single thing. About the master, about the enlightened one, everything is important. The way he looks at you, the way he begins his talk, the way he ends, the way the words are modulated, the way gaps are created, by observing these minute things, you can attain to great awakening within you. It is said about the singer, if you can, there is a male singer who sings, gives his playback for the act actor is enacting that song on the stage. There is a lip singing. There may not be a coordination between the playback and the lip singing. If you start focusing on the breathing or overlap your breathing with that of the singer, your lips singing will be synchronized. So when in search of the masters of Gurji, his biographer Leon Leeford went to Middle East in search of the masters of Gurji. He met one master after a great search. Because Sufis have hidden themselves in the garb of the world so that ordinary people may not recognize him. He is doing the regular work. One was a carpet weaver. The other, when he met the master, Leon asked, what did you teach Gurdjieff? The master said, I taught him how to breathe. If someone tells you that I will teach you how to breathe, you will be dazed. Breathing, that is normal. I do every day. So Leon said, breathing? So the master replied, how many of us really know how to breathe. Firstly, there has to be awareness on each breath that is comes in and it goes out. With this great peace descends, you are connected to that reservoir which is peace and harmony within. And once you start breathing, your breath becomes synchronized with that of the Master that is all is needed. Because he is already the embodiment of peace and harmony. And it is the breathing that connects you to that harmony within. So he gives a very minute details. Many times in the past I have spoken on various sutras of Buddha the Diamond Sutra. It is in Pali language known as Prajna Paramit, Hridayam Sutra. Hrida means heart. Or Diamond Sutra. Diamond means, diamond is used, is the hardest metal and it is used to cut the glass and other hardened metals. So it is known as Vajra Chedika, Prajna Paramit Sutra, the Heart Sutra, the Discipline of Transcendence. I spoke of this Sutra out of my tremendous love for the non-being of Buddha. Buddha represents the highest peak of consciousness. Buddha is the experiment in the totality of consciousness. He represents the fruition of one's being or the blossoming as enlightenment. Buddha represents 
a totally different kind of spirituality, pure and sublime. Buddha is the most godless yet most godly being ever walked on the earth. Buddha propounded the religionless religion where the way was important. Never before this happened that someone spoke of human transformation in such profound yet uncontaminated way. Over the years, each time the message of Buddha overflowed, the need was there to pre preserve the message in as many forms as it may be possible. But it never happened as time was not right. Once again, as day after day, through each session, the sutras are decoded to expound their utter silence. The message or the silence is captured in this form. Now the advantage is that this message of utter silence of Diamond Sutra is simultaneously available in other formats as well. It is available in the print form. It is available in audio format now. The Diamond Sutra is needed as the sutras of utter emptiness. It never happened. Nobody had said anything and also nobody has heard anything. In master-disciple relationship, words become less important all the time. And one day, words are replaced with silence. Why should a Buddha and a Bodhisattva need to talk as well at all? The Diamond Sutra has no sutra in it. That is why it is called Diamond Sutra. It is an exposition of utter emptiness. If you get caught in the words, you will miss the message. Diamond Sutra is absolutely empty. There is no message in it. Then why is it so important? It is the message of emptiness, which you have forgotten. You are interested in the spaces being filled, then nothing can be. And when something is totally empty, you empty your room of everything that is there, placed in different locations. And you speak a word, an echo comes back to you. This echo is of the emptiness. When you go in the valley and you utter something, resounds and the echo comes back to you. So there is, Diamond Sutra is absolutely empty. There is no message in it. It is a way to connect to your utter silence, which is, which has been lost in the wilderness of the world and its affairs. There is nothing to read and nothing to hear. It is utter silence. If you read something in Diamond Sutra, you have missed it. If you have found some doctrine in it or philosophy in it, then you must be imagining. It must be your dream. Buddha has not taught anything. Neither has Subhuti heard anything. It is considered as wordless dialogue between Buddha and his disciple Subhuti. In that non-talking and non-hearing sutra, indeed something has happened. And that which happened is beyond words. You may find it strange. But each one of you have experienced this. May I remind you of that? In a state of when love blossoms for the first time between two, there is no word. Just looking at one another, just drowning into one another's eyes, holding the hands, there is a surge of energy as if 
The terminals have been connected and the energy is flowing from one to the other and balancing itself. You forget about every noise and disturbance. You start drowning into each other. This is the wordless communion between the lover and beloved. When the master and disciple reach to that realm, there is no communion, no word. Simply there remains a communion, a communion of silence, utter silence. In that non-talking and non-hearing sutra, indeed something has happened. And that which happened is beyond words. Anand has tried to capture these for you in words. But it was not delivered in words. Buddha did not deliver in words. But it is the uniqueness of Anand that has tried to capture the silence into the words. This is what I am trying to do. Capture that silence, put it into the words. Just as when the process of speaking begins, the words are spoken. This is an analog form. Analog is converted into digital so that it can travel far and wide. And then digital is again converted into analog for you. The master has experienced the silence within. This is what he is communicating through the words. Because it is only the words that reach you first. And if these words are not able to connect you to your silence, to that reservoir, or give you the taste of that, then the communion has not Then the authenticity of the Master is questioned. Anand has tried to capture that for you in words, but it was not delivered in words. It was a communion between the two who have attained to emptiness. Buddha is empty. Suvati is empty. You just go to the sea and you see the morning and the fresh air and the sun rays and the waves. And you come home. Now you try to relate to someone what you have seen. Then you relate only words. The word sea is not sea. The word sun is not sun. And the word freshness is not freshness. How do you commune? You have come back from the bee and your beloved asks you what happened. You bring all that happened into words, knowing perfectly well that cannot be brought into the words. It cannot be reduced into the words. Words are so pale and incapable. Yet still, if the emptiness has happened within, there is a unique way of communion. This is why it is called communion. Something has certainly happened between Buddha and Subha. Something which is transcendental. Maybe that has not, maybe that has just looked into each other's eyes. Maybe they had just looked into each other's eyes like the lover and beloved. Something was triggered in the consciousness of Subhati by Buddha's presence or Buddha's emptiness. This is what happens in a communion between lover and beloved. Something is triggered deep within. Anand has minutely observed this and is trying to report this for you. You are blind. You cannot see light. You can only hear the word light. So remember the Diamond Sutra is not a sutra at all. That is why it is called Diamond Sutra, the most precious because it contains no philosophy, no system, and no theory. Contains no word. Instead, it is an empty book. If you can forget the words 
and you can go deeper into the gaps between the words if you can forget the lines and go deeper between the lines in the intervals and in the pauses then you will find what has really happened between Buddha and Subhuti. It is not a verbal communion. I am also talking to you but still I would like to remind you to remember that my message is not in words. You will have to step upon the words to get it. Use the words as the staircase, as the stepping stone. Remember stepping stone can become hindrance if you do not know how to step over them. You have and the same stone can become a great source for transformation if you can use it as a milestone. You have to listen in silence to silence. Buddha has not spoken a single word. Neither has Subhuti heard a single word. It is the compassion of Anand to make a few maps for you. Those maps are not of any country. If you have a map of India or United States of America, that map is neither India nor America. It cannot be. How can it be? However, with some limitations, these can help you. The map can lead you to the real content of the country, India or America. It is like the arrow on the milestone by the side of the road points towards something. The whole Diamond Sutra points towards silence. Hence, so many contradictions are there in it because only through contradictions can silence be created. Each word has to be contradicted by the opposite. Immediately it is uttered so that they can destroy each other. And in the weak, silence is felt. My effort through these talks on Diamond Sutra is to instill in you the same silence, the same ambience, that prevailed when these sutras happened for the first time. When these sutras happened for the first time. Listen to overflow of these sutras, imbibe the silence that overflowed, and more precisely, imbibe the silence that these sutras or the message of Buddha creates in and around you but never imitate the master. Only then one day you will be able to become the master, love and listen. But always remember that when you go far in, you have to transcend all clouds. With the end of Diamond Sutra, Buddha begins the journey of utter emptiness. The journey of utter silence, the wordless, the formless. Buddham Sharanam Gacham. Sharan means shelter. Gachami means I go to the shelter of the Buddha, the awakened one. Dhammam Sharanam Gacham. I go to the shelter of Dham, the way. We have recently concluded the way of Nanak where he used the word Kum, the cosmic law. Buddha used the word Dham, Prince. And the last of these sutras is Sangham Sharinam Gacchami. Sang means congregation, communion, a communion where this is brood. Where there is a way, it surrounds an awakened one. 
I go to that company. Buddham Sharanam Gachami Dharmam Sharanam Gachami Sangham Sharanam Gachami Before I begin to expound the sutras of Buddha that are a silent dialogue between Buddha and Subhuti. These sutras are simply known as Diamond Sutra or Vajra Chedika, Prajna Paramita Sutra. Vajra means thunderbolt, Chedika means that pierces, that thunderbolt that pierces. You would have seen the constructor, construction workers use a particular instrument known as Hilti. This is very strong and with a hammering effect it can dig or remove the existing structure in no time. So it creates a hole by a hammering effect. That hammering effect on consciousness is very important. Each word when it is spoken along with the word comes a silence. It creates a hammering effect on your consciousness. Just like the water dropping on the rock, drop by drop, and one day eventually it makes a hole in the rock. Bajra Chedika, the thunderbolt that has capacity pierce, and what it has to pierce through Prajna Paramit, that those opaque, invisible, hardened layers of the mind, your memory, your ego sense, your intellect, all those layers can be pierced through. This is why it is called a diamond suit. Truth is simple yet utterly difficult to comprehend. Truth is difficult to comprehend because it is simple to be put into the words. It is simple and your minds are so complicated that you cannot understand that which is simple. Mind will go on missing it. Truth is so simple that it gives you no challenge. It is simple that you may pass by the side of it and remain completely unaware that you have passed by the truth. That's why it is difficult to recognize a master. It is the grace of the master that gives you a vision to recognize him. It is the grace of the master that gives you that penetrating vision that you can recognize the master. That's why Sufi says the master appears the moment disciple is there. If the disciple is not there, if the disciple would, that capacity that can resonate with the energy field of the master. Remember for something to lie. Oh, you have a battery, the two poles need to balance one another. If there is a shortage, shorting in the negative terminal, the current will not complete this cycle and in that there will not be any illumination. The two has to neutralize one another. So master and disciple are two poles. One is overflowing, other is ready to resonate with that. And in that very moment, something begins to happen. This is the beginning of the Diamond Sutra, Bajra Chedika, Prajna Paramita Sutra.